Hey guys, this is Eric Weigander with Weigander Racing. Today's video is about a ported, me showing off my ported AFR 210 small block Chevy head. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, it's Weigander Racing at, um, well, anyway, Weigander Racing on Instagram, you will see the progress on these heads. And if you're a customer of mine, you can actually track the progress of your stuff through Instagram because I post um, typically every day just showing the progress that's done in the shop. So some days it doesn't seem like there's a lot getting done, but there's a lot of stuff where I'm just like, uh, I'll wait to post a picture the next day or it might be really late. But I'm gonna try to keep that more up to date so that people can track what's going on. So if you're like, when's my stuff gonna be done or when are you gonna start working on it, you can kind of see. Because a lot of stuff goes on the same day. I physically can't grind more than five hours um, at a time. So typically what I mean is I'll grind for five hours and then I might spend two hours doing valve jobs or something, then come back and grind for some more hours. But five straight hours is the most I can do. Um, I mean, I guess I could go longer, but it's very, my back starts killing me, my arms start hurting. It isn't worth it to go further than that. Anyway, um, so usually I'll take a break and I'll maybe flow some heads, valve job or something else. So you can, anyway, point being is you can see all the progress I'm making in this shop on Instagram. I do have a TikTok page. It is not Weingarten Racing. It's something else. If you are the first person to figure out what my TikTok page is and then email me what it is, I'll send you a free Wagner Racing t-shirt. Um, I usually do those for like videos. Um, so anyway, there's that. But let's get to today's. Today's an AFR 210. A customer had sent me this head and he had ran it on his um, full-size 4x4 truck and he wanted me to um, port it and make it better. He had actually done something pretty clever and I don't know if I mentioned this enough, but um, I have a... One of the services I offer is you can reserve a spot. And what I mean by this is this guy called probably in, I think, August um, and said, hey, man, can you port my heads? And I said, and he asked how long it'd be. I told him, I was like, wow. He goes, well, can I reserve a spot for a certain time? I said, yes. So here's how it works. He called in August and he knew he was going to have these off the truck at a certain date, February 28th. And so what he did is he paid a $100 deposit and it holds that spot. So on February 28th comes... Um, that's when his heads have to be there. And for a hundred bucks, I hold that spot. The hundred dollars gets applied to your bill. If the heads aren't here by February 28th, I keep the hundred dollars. This way you can run through the whole season and you've got, as soon as your season's over, you can take them off, send them in to me and they'll be ready. The catch is it's many months out and I only reserve two spots during any month. Um, the rest are like as they've come through. So this guy reserved a long time ago. This way you keep enjoying the season, didn't have to worry about being stuck here. Otherwise, people would just send them in and then you're just in line. Um, so whenever it comes your time, you're up. And so what can happen is people reserve spots and let's say this guy reserved it in August. Well, someone else the next day buys a set of heads. His actually might get finished after this because this one's reserved for a spot before him. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. Uh, it does help for those that want to enjoy the season but still want their heads ported in the off season. So anyway, off to that. Anyway, he was just using these for a, uh, like I said, it's a 4x4. It's a nice head from the factory, AFR 227. And I did some modifications. So here's what was done. First off, a 210 has a, um, a two-way intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. This one now has a 210 intake valve and a 16 exhaust valve. So in other words, I increased the intake valve size. He is, by the way, a bigger bore, a 455 bore, and or 4125 bore. So he is big enough to take advantage of the 210 intake valve for this. If it was on a 430 bore, I'd just leave it at 208. This is also, when you look at the flow numbers, like, is that all you got out of it? Yes, because he's targeting a much lower RPM. He's only going to, so it's a 427. He's only going to be turning at 5,800 RPM max. So there's no sense in blowing this whole house head out making it big and flowing a whole lot more air when he won't be able to take advantage of it so the idea is to focus on improving the head making it uh, larger but also really getting the most flow for the size but not making it just all out for a full race head because that's just not what his is so what i've done for that because because of that this has a 45 degree valve job most of my race heads will have a 50 degree on both um, this one has a 45 degree valve job and like I said, it's bigger at two, uh, 210. The bowl and everything else is much smaller than I would for use my race stuff. And even the, the throat's slightly smaller too. The pinch I did open up um, quite a bit bigger just because it, it's got a bigger cubic inch. And I say quite a bit bigger, but not really. There's not much room to work with it right there. Um, 
And that's where it pretty much is. So let's take a look at some of the numbers to see what it is before and after. So this is what the AFR 210 flowed uh, on my bench stock. And I'm not sure, if, I believe this is the race port. Part number's upside down, but it's right there, the 1054. I believe this is the race port, it's not the competition port one. And if you look at it, this on a 4155 bore was flowed on. It went 299.3 at peak and that was at 600 valve lift. Then it backed up. If you watched one of my previous videos about posting the nitro numbers before and after porting, you'll know why I talk about why it's good to keep the um, flow numbers to keep increasing as much as you possibly can, or at least hold the same. This is the exhaust. Now this was flowed without an exhaust pipe. I know AFR flows them with the exhaust pipe, I don't do that. This is after. So this is after the port work. And you might say, well, you only have 318. That's the best you got, because it kind of, well, 319 there. Um, it kind of trails off. Yes, it does, but again, um, I'm not so much worried about this. If it was more of a race application, I'd be far more concerned. 5,800 RPM, it's a different deal. Exhaust picked up two, but it only it lost a little bit there but and there. But for the most part, it gained about five CFM. So, but if we look at where, and by the way, he's only gonna do a six, 10 inch valve lift. So we'll look at just some of my numbers I care most about. I really care about 400, no matter what the head. And it went from a 246 to a 255. That's, you know, gain of nine CFM. That's a pretty good amount there. It's much harder to gain flow at the lower lifts, by the way, than it is the uppers. Um, only gain, well, pretty much a wash at five. Then at six, it gains right at about 10 CFM. So that's a good gain there. And then in the upper lifts, it gains quite a bit. This should help it kind of carry the power. So even though it's gonna make it at 5,800 or so, hopefully it keeps um, holding on to that power. So in case he ever decides to go up a little bit higher, it's got it. The exhaust flow is pretty good too. Um, 400, like I said, it was down to three. And I should point this out. The exhaust numbers are almost pointless because if I add, for instance, if I make the throat smaller on the exhaust so it's got more radius, it flows way more, makes less power because you're st now you're still restricted because your throat's too small. So it looks good on the flow bench, but it needs bigger area to make any type of power and looks good on the bench, but it ain't doing reality. Typically that causes the flow numbers to drop down a little bit, especially in the lower lifts. And that's kind of what you're seeing. Peak numbers began about five CFM. Now this is from the Sanyez flow bench. And I of course always try to flow them on the super flow as well. So let me look at those numbers real quick. This is the same, I didn't change anything. I just took it off one bench, put it on the other. So this is what you can see on that. So if you look now it's 256 or 257 on the, at 400 on the Superflow, about 312. And then this one says it's 326. So it's a little bit higher and the exhaust is about 10 CFM higher at 240. So anyway, that just gives you some more information about the head. But I also wanted to do this video about something else he got as an option. Now he's running a hydraulic roller camshaft and um, he had uh, flow uh, Curtis from, and I can't remember what the name of his company is at the top of my head. And that he's probably gonna get on to me for that, but I, I can't remember. Anyway, he had someone else spec a camshaft and he does really good with camshafts, but he asked for a spec valve spring and this is the spec valve spring he requested. This is a PAC 1221X. And this is what it's got for seat pressure is 160 and open pressure is 424, made for a hydraulic roller. This spring um, is really meant more for an LS head. And the, one of the benefits for an AFR head is that AFR heads have an eight millimeter valve stem, both intake and exhaust. The benefit to that, and it's a pretty big benefit, is that's the same size that LS heads are. Same bead groove, everything. The length, of course, is different um, because of you know different head and whatnot, but the stem size itself and the groove is the same as an LS valve. Now, why is that important? Because you can run LS springs on their heads. The only tricky part with this, Ford, uh, this 1221X spring is this. There's an ID locator that is required for each spring. And what that does is, oh, I might have one here. here. Let me just pull it out. There we go. This is an ID locator. The catch is, this inside diameter has to go around the guide. The ones I've been able to find, the one that PAC makes for this is made for an LS, but they made it for a stock LS guide, which is a 5020, I think that's what they claim. Well, most aftermarkets are 570. So I had a, the hard time was finding this, the ID locator to work with this spring on this head, but I did find it, only one place. 
So that would be the only thing that's trick with it. The catch is, love the spring. You can't use them on most small block Chevy heads because the stem's too big and they don't make a retainer that fits with it besides with these LS locks. So that is kind of a disadvantage. Now, and I also want to bring this up too. If you don't run these springs, of course, and you can't run them, what springs do I recommend for a hydraulic roller that I really like? The one I like that works on, it will work on this, it will work on a big block Chevy, small block Chevy, is the PAC 1220X. Now, it's a beehive spring, and it's got a really small retainer, much smaller than this. The same valve spring pressure is almost as this, but it's a single spring uh, and like really small um, retainer because it's beehive design. Love it. It will work perfectly with um, any, really any type valve stems. It would work with this as also because they have retainers for that. It also works with 1132nd stems that you see on most small block Chevys and aftermarket big block Chevys. Popular spring. Now it is an upgrade. Most people um, don't always want to spend the extra money for that spring, but that's the one I recommend besides this one. This one's really good. Catch is, like I said, only really works on AFRs. Now, which brings up something else. I want to show this. So I took his head apart when they came in. Okay. As I was taking apart the heads, this is what I saw. That's the retainer, or sorry, the, the lock that came out of the head. So these are the lock from AFR. It was broke. So he'd been running it and never even knew, but he had a broke lock. I only found one that was that way. So instead, they're getting replaced with these pack ones. That's the part number that's going to go in it. So hopefully these are stronger and they work better. I won't have an issue. But I'm just showing you sometimes stuff happens. By the way, he had no idea that it happened. So just something to keep in mind. So replacing it with that. Anyway, a little bit longer of a video. Didn't mean to make it this long. Probably me rambling. But um, there you go. I do have a more radical set of 210s I'm going to do. I'm two heads away from that. That one should go much higher as far as flow numbers goes. If I tried using that same head, like making this more radical in his deal, he would hate it. Because for the range he's operating in, it wouldn't be as good. It would flow better, yeah. But he wouldn't be happy. It wouldn't run as well. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. You guys, take care.